Hey, 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 happy Wednesday and welcome back to another episode of Black Women in Business, The Dirty Truth. So today we are bringing kind of a special one that is near and dear to the three of our hearts. And just like everything that we've talked about over the last month, going into month two, so excited. It's a topic that gets thrown around and that we feel like has some culture barriers and has some misinformation and misguidance around it. And we want to kind of break it down from our standpoint. And I kind of want to iterate that this is our viewpoint on it. Like it's not the word and it's not maybe how you see it, but this is just talking points and ways that we want to help you move forward and kind of open that dialogue. That's how we stand in those spaces is if we can have the dialogue, have the conversation and get those things out there. And that's what we want to do today. So today you can see the ladies here. I've already been rubbing them hands together and smelling the hair to doing all the things. I'm going to get to mine. Don't worry. We're going to talk about what essentials are and what they ain't. Essential oils. I don't know if I said oil. I think I just said essentials, y'all. Essential oils, what they are and what they are not, what they ain't. All the ebonics up in here, y'all. <laughs> so over the last few years, probably we can probably even go back now and say five, six, since we've kind of slowly come over this hump that we've had. We, I know the three of us and anybody within our industry and who use oils have seen like this major of where essential oils have gone. And there is a lot of misinformation. There is a lot of um, and just a lot of this about what they are, what they do, where you can get them, whose is better and all of that. There's a lot. And we're just going to kind of give it to you real and raw like we've done over the last month because we don't know how to do it any other way. So if you have any questions for us, if you're live, drop them in the comments. We will answer you as we go. If we see them, if not, we'll drop it in there. If you're catching us on replay, hashtag us replay so we know to come back and engage with you. So let's jump right into it, y'all. Essential oils. What you got? <laughs> Well, I will first start off by saying um, I feel like this last year, people have come to say that when you use essential oils, you're practicing some sort of witchcraft. Well, I'm here to say that I'm not a witch. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I'm not Hermione. I don't do that. OK, so um, <clears throat> for me, essential oils are not practicing witchcraft. It's just having a wellness cabinet in my house for my babies and everybody else around me. But what I have wanted to just preface by saying, I'm sorry if I come off a little abrasive in this because <laughs> uh, this, like Tamika said, this is near and dear to me and I'm pretty sure them too. But I feel like this started back before like the slave passage when um, I guess Africans, they were practicing their own thing. Native Americans, they were practicing their own thing and they were using essential oils. Um, and then you have Europeans come in and they do all this. And I'm sorry, if it ain't white, it ain't right. I don't know how many times I've heard that around my area. And then you have people coming in of Caucasian descent and they're using these oils. And now all of a sudden we want to jump on this bandwagon of Oh, this is the thing to do now just because they say it's okay. But why couldn't we trust our own selves and stick with what we knew instead of just saying, okay, now they say it's okay. We can now do this. I don't know, but that's just where I'm at now. And they have not been any hocus pocus for me over here. I just actually consistently use them and know that they work for me and my family. That's my two cents. Love it, love it, love it. Um, so I know for me, so I have a very logical brain. So even when it comes to stuff like faith or stuff, like I, you got to give me evidence. Don't tell me this does this just because it does it, right? Like I need to understand the science. I need to understand like how it got to where it goes. Um, so first and foremost, I would love um, for those that are watching, if you are not familiar with essential oils, let us know in the comments. If you are like, I've heard about them, I know they smell like something, but that's about it. 
Um, I want to first in, 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 in start with the basics, because first and foremost, what are essential oils? I think that's key, right? So they really are that um, volatile li liquid from the plants, herbs, shrubs, whatever you're extracting it from. Um, fruits, we usually cold press them from the rind. Um, but starting there, the processes matter because something can smell like lemon, but not operate the way lemon is supposed to operate in the body, right? And so first and foremost, for all of us, the reason we did our diligence and uh, chose the company that we're with is because of the extensiveness they go through in order to make sure what we have in the bottle is what it is. OK, so for me, when I really started making that transition, because essential oils were always a part of my life, a part of my culture. Um, so growing up, um, we grew up using medicine as well as herbs and oils and things like that. Um, but I know that growing up, we did have, in fact, some Young Living oils that we later found, but they were mixed in with all types of other oils, too because we did not understand that there was any difference. And I think that when we had that huge rush of people, oh, essential oils, this blogger said that this is good, and they started using them, they ran out to the store, they grabbed whatever oils was recommended, they used it, and it didn't work. They were like, well, now I just smell like patchouli. Great. <laughs> right? Smell like incense. And so now what? Right? And so then they just left it because there was no education piece to that. And so I want to start with that. It wasn't until I got the education piece to connect to the power of what it does that then I saw the transformations in our life, in our health, in our wellness, and how it cooperates with a healthy lifestyle. I can, um, I agree with Dana. So I'm not the big science person. <laughs> Data said volatile and I love, love Lord. <laughs> that, but it, I'm not that I am the person that's like, I do need the like, give it to me, but I'm more like, let me try it. And if it does, then I'm like, wait a minute, how did that work? Like, whoa, now let me figure it out. But I need it on the like, the little oils for dummies book because all the rest of that will have me researching more because I don't know what this is and I don't know what that means. But yes, I 100% agree if um, we would love to know where you are on knowing what essential oils are, because that is key. That'll make a difference in this conversation and how you have this conversation with us three or anybody going down, because there's a lot out there. I didn't realize until I got so deep just how many companies make them or sell them and buy them from someone else and sell them. And then like Dana mentioned, the last, I guess of the last five years, you've seen them in stores. I've seen them in stores that are, are like, why? Why do you have them? Oh, but, yeah, like, <laughs> why do you have them? And we're just like, oh, I've heard of this. Let me try this. And there is a really big difference. And for me, um, I don't think essential oils themselves were never a part of like growing up. We used things that were aromatherapy, but not by a company that I would ever suggest to go and purchase it because even though it's labeled that way, there's other things that are working. And I, and then while my body was still used to all of those products that I was using, it did, I guess what it was supposed to do. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was for me, the action behind it and my open-mindedness to starting it was similar to what Andriana said. I can remember like you look in the Bible. I'm like, I was 900 years old. Please tell me what you was doing. Not that I want to go 900 years because these 30 plus years is a little cray cray, but how did you get there? You was doing something like you was, you was using something. We, you know, Western medicine is like, is, is young. So what were you using? And that always stuck with me. Or when you heard grandma like rub dirt on it. And then for some reason it worked, but it didn't make sense. We cracked jokes, right? We're like, grandma said, go get this. You pulled this. And I've heard lots of stories of people being like, this is what I did. I don't know why, but you do it, right? You've been doing it, tanning it down generation to generation for hundreds of years. And you don't understand why. And this is it. And that always intrigued me. And seeing Native Americans just do it, grinding up. And that's just what they did. It's just what they do. 
And it's like, how? I want to know because there's some piece to that. And how do we think it came into Western medicine with all the things that we did and things we do now? Where did it come from? It had to start somewhere. So that always intrigued me. And I so I was really open minded to starting it. And then, you, like I said, I used it for the first time to help with sleeping and then like, well, how? So that made me look up how and made me dive even deeper than I did specifically with Young Living to understand that, yep, I'm moving forward 100 percent with them because I can do things like call them and say, hey, what what is this? What's in this? And not be hung up on or told you can't know or actually go have a hand in planting what came in you know, a bottle of something. And that was important to me. Mm-hmm. And that means something, you know, ground up because again, my mindset was, man, that mug was 900 years old. Like what was he eating? What was he drinking? What was he doing? Mm-hmm. Um, and Dana made the comment before we came live to y'all about it was given to Jesus before he was even putting his toes in the ground. Essential oils were given to Jesus in their rawest form. Some of the the hardest to come by essential oils. And that's huge. That's big to me. That that fills me up and made me want to learn made me want to learn more and understand how they could benefit me and my family. Yeah. So I, oh go ahead. Yeah. And I was just gonna say too, it's it so I think I, I'll probably get the more science technical with some <laughs> of this stuff, but it's always interesting to me, even something as simple as aspirin, right? Mm-hmm. When you think about aspirin. Um, when they first formulated, the baseline of it is the same, same constituent properties that are in winter green. Okay. So that's why even sometimes I have come across people um, in this wellness journey that um, are sensitive to aspirin. They either allergic to it, can't use it, can't touch it. And they're also sensitive to winter green, the oil. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason being is it always makes me wonder from a scientific standpoint, right? If you depended on nature to be your supplier, it's going to limit how much money you can make, right? Mm -hmm. So what they've done is they use the baseline of that same constituent property. So they're still using wintergreen. There's a reason they're still using wintergreen, right? But then they mimic or they try Mm -hmm. to mimic the properties. They expand on it and then they create medicine. Okay, if you really, really research the vast majority of medicines, it stem lines from what they've studied in nature and how it's able to repair in nature or fix certain things in nature. And they try to duplicate that. Mm -hmm. And so to me, it only makes sense if you're just taking something from nature anyways and trying to duplicate it. Why don't I just go to nature and start there? (laughs) Right. Um. The way our cells operate and respond to things, right? There's certain things that, again, have been studied where when we use things like essential oils, it actually opens up and oxygenates our cells. The more oxygenated those cells are, the more good things can get in there Mm -hmm. and the easier it is for that body to then fight, right, when it comes. So I want to first be very, very clear. I am not saying that essential oils cure, heal, what they do is they speak with the body, right? They speak with the body and they say, hey, this is the way we should operate. This Mm -hmm. is the way we should work. So if you're new to this discussion, um, and as was mentioned, same with me. So when you go into my bathroom in what is a traditional medicine cabinet, right? I have tools that come in the form of essential oils, right? And through education, we simplify that process. Just like you know, um, if you use medicines, right? My stomach hurts, I give my kids Tums or whatever. I don't know, or I don't know the medical name. I just, I think the brand, sorry. I I try not to put out brands in there, but whatever, whatever you would call those, anti-acid pills or whatever. You know that that's- anti-acid, yeah. Okay. So you know that my my kid's tummy hurts. That's what I use. It's the same thing with oils, right? My kid's tummy hurts. I'm going to get tummy jize. I'm going to get die jize, right? We we actually make it idiot proof at Young Living. So you're like, oh my goodness, <laughs> thyroid. Oh, try thyromin, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, Para free. 
hmm, para, para free. What is that helping with, right? Like we idiot proof it for you. So you don't even have to research like you do in medicine, right? But again, those are tools that can be used the same way you're already using yeah. to keep yourself well. Yeah, I agree. And and that's Dana brought up two points that I would like for us to kind of expound on more. Let's take the tools part is huge. Um, I'm glad that somebody said it because I was like, oh, you might want to say that is that there, there are there are tools. And I know we've mentioned in another episode, you know, about, you know, we when you got that friend that's always sit right every every time in December they get in this. Because like Dana said, it's speaking to your body. It's working with your body's natural rhythm and its natural cadence and doing the things that your body's like, oh, I can I can take this in, use what I need, send it here, there, and, and every, everywhere, and then get rid of it. Whereas, you know, that aspirin or whatever you're taking is a much bigger, oh, let me, let me get a little science. Oh, I'm finna do it, y'all. Much bigger, like, makeup or molecule. So it just floats around your body constantly. It's just there. Like, I know it came up when we went into this crazy health crisis. I saw lots of people talking about things like, you know, you got plastic floating around your body because of the products that you're using. And you're like, well, how can that be? Because it's such a big molecule within your body and your body can't get rid of it. It just is constantly floating. So mm -hmm. essential oils are tools because like Dana said, that it's coming from the ground. You eat a vegetable without a care in the world. Even if you don't like it, your mama said eat it, so you eat it, right? And you don't think nothing of it, whereas that's what that essential oil is, right? Wintergreen. It's in your gum and you chew it without a, you know, without a care. And maybe it does something for you and you're like, well, I just chew this gum whenever I feel this way. There's a reason. And it's working with whatever your body's natural rhythm is without causing any harm. And I think that that was huge. And then the next thing that um, Dana brought up was the fact that it is from Mother Earth. It's in the ground versus taking pieces from it. That's why real essential oils are costly. I know it's something that I hear a lot when I talk to people. It's, oh, but I can go to Target and there was a lavender on the shelf and it was in the you know, dollar days bins for a dollar. And I'm like, okay. So I'm just going to try that one and I'll let you know. Okay. Well, you're not going to let me know nothing because you finna say it smelled good, but it's not going to give to you what I was able to use it for, which is why here I am five plus years later, because it's not the same, right? Dana said it very eloquently that it costs more. You have to rely on the rain, the sun, you know, all the elements in order to get this lavender plant to do what it needs to do. And if you're trying to just make money, you ain't got time for that. You ain't got time. You have no time because if there's a drought or if, you know, we came back in the world and all the mosquitoes are back in there eating things up, now you got to wait, right? So there's there's a reason and in, in, in rhyme in all of that. And Dana pointed it out. So I wanted to touch on that piece because I know for me, that is something that I get a lot of like questions. I'll say questions. I won't say pushback because that's a mindset. So I get a lot of questions all the time about, well, this frankincense is $80, but I can go over here and get this one for $20. I'm going to go with the $20. Why wouldn't I? So, ladies, if you don't mind, let's kind of touch on that piece um, because I know for me it is one that I get a lot, a lot of pushback on. And um, I know some of y'all watching are probably like, yes, because I know you tried to give me that $80 oil when I could get it for $20. <laughs> I just feel like for me, because I, I get this question a lot too, like what sets, I mean, why would I spend $80 for frankincense when I can go and get it for $15 at Walmart? I, hey, um, I do it because um, it helps, it works for me. And I know with the seed to seal promise of the company that I am with, the sourcing, the science that's behind it. And just like I think Tamika said earlier, where she can actually go and plant this and see this whole process done, the transparency, it's transparency for me. That's why I'm giving you this $80 because it took probably more than that to get this oil to you, but they just charged you $80. Calm down. <laughs> 
versus a twenty dollar bottle and you don't know what's in it. It might be water that you get. I don't know what you get. The other thing to keep in mind too is um, unfortunately, when it comes to natural health, the regulations, at least in our country, is very, very loose, right? So according to our government, this is cosmetics, right? It's cosmetics. So we don't have to regulate it in the same way that we would regulate things that we consider medicine. So anybody, I mean, this, this is the beauty of, you know, living in a consumer ran country, right? Anybody can then say, I'm going to now have essential oils, right? And according to our government, you only need to have 8% of whatever you're claiming is in there. And you can fill up the rest with whatever you want and you can still label it 100% pure, right? So we talked a little bit about lavender, right? Lavender is one of the most overly produced oils, but yet when you look at the amount of harvest that is possible, like the math ain't mathing, okay? <laughs> there's, there's not enough lavender being grown, harvested, and planted in a year for the amount of bottles that you're seeing around here. And the reason being is because most of the bottles aren't lavender, <laughs> right? They smell nice, right? And if you are one, I and I love you, I bless you. If you're one, you're sitting here and you're like, I just want stuff that smells good, right? Then this is probably not for you, right? Like this, you, you can still use it. But if that's all you're looking for, then this might not be for you. Whereas what we're talking about is medicinal properties within our oils, okay? So we're talking health we're talking wellness. And so I think it's very, very important to know who you are, which is fine because there's so many times where literally I have people, all I do is I send them oil blends to put in their diffuser. That's all they want. They just, I just want my house smelling good, right? It's, it's fall and I just want the apple crisp and pumpkin spice, right? <laughs> like, so yes, I would rather you have a diffuser with pure essential oils um, flowing through your home so you can have that aroma, then toxins that are actually destroying your respiratory system and making you more susceptible to illness, right? So if that's what you want, that's cool. And I do feel like it, getting back to that cultural thing, I do think that a lot of times um, where I want, you know, medicinal properties, a lot of my people just want something that smells good or something simple, right? And so it can be for either or. And so I just wanted to put that out there too, that um, find your space where this works or makes sense for you. And the small changes that you make every day are going to impact in a bigger way, right? So I, I'll just use this analogy, like if you smoke, right? If you say, hey, I'm going to work out, but I'm not ready to quit smoking, you're still going to be in a better position, right? Because you're working out than if you're like, I'm smoking in, I'm just sitting on the couch not doing nothing and not being active. And again, you know, no judgment one way or the other. But all I'm saying is if you're going to make small changes, start little, right? And move up incremental until you can make those bigger changes. For me, it was drastic. When Young Living came into my life, my son was sick. I had no hope. I had to get rid of everything. I was like extreme. My poor husband was like, what is happening? what is happening, <laughs> right? Like, so you don't have to be that extreme just to be riding with us. I guess I said that. <laughs> I, I can say hands down, because I was just thinking like, Dana's absolutely right. It's something that I say a lot, especially within my oil community is that just a little bit, because if you make that decision, I'm gonna throw away the candles, the wall plug and listen, hand to the sky. I had probably a wall about six, seven years ago, maybe a little longer. I had a wall plug in in every outlet in my house, candles on, you know, the warmers, because I didn't really want to light them because I had this thing about them burning so quickly and you pay so much money for them. So you melt them and everywhere. So I know I get, it. I want, you want your house to smell good. You don't have to walk in and be like, oh, it smells good in here. But it was, my youngest, I remember we brought him home. We had a dog at the time 
and we walked through the door and every time we would come home, he would immediately start sneezing. And I was like, oh, I think he's, my first thing was not the products within my home because my house smelled good. It was, I think he lurked to the dog. I'm ready to move the dog to the house, y'all, because I'm like, it's the dog. It has to be the dog. It's the only thing in here that could be causing that problem. Because my thing was, why would anybody sell me something that could potentially harm myself or my child? Right. And I know a lot of you are probably like, yeah, why can I buy something that is harmful to me in any capacity? So it wasn't until I had on, I don't remember what it was. I had on some kind of body spray or perfume and I was holding him and I lifted him up and just that side of his body had broken out. The rest of it was fine, but just the part that was on me. And I thought, Ooh, something's not right. So we turned everything off, moved it out left. We went, I think it was my oldest football game, came home and he didn't sneeze. So it was like a click for me. So like Dana said, if you're just right now, you're not ready to grasp the whole, you know, wellness part of it, because maybe it seems like a lot, or you're like, that's just not my space, but you want your house to smell good. I am going to mother you and tell you make the switch because you'll see a difference. There will there will be something that will change between you and somebody else in your household that'll make you say there's more to this and then come back and talk to us and we'll make we'll get you extreme <laughs> because it will make a huge it will make a huge huge difference. Just that little that little switch, that little switch in your home with whether it's air quality, maybe a skin is totally different. There will be something because there is a lot not to make this like a whole Dr. Phil special on what's in something you're using. <clears throat> but just saying that, just give a little quick. You can even use your little Google search box and do a little search and you'll be very surprised at what that small change can do. And like we say, baby steps to everything in life. You start making a change and, and it's going to be, it can be drastic for you, like hugely drastic for you. Um, Yeah. I could go on for days. <laughs> we both can. Um, there's just a couple more statistics I just want to throw out there just mm -hmm. because I, I hope at the end of this, it will make you think maybe I should start incorporating essential oils and replacing with other things. Um, so one of the things that brought me to Young Living during that time period is my son was asthmatic. And I would literally be under his crib listening all night to make sure he kept breathing. Right. Like, and so that's how destitute I was during that period. But I just pulled up some statistics that I think are super interesting. So did you know that um, in the African American population, 40%, they're 40% more likely to have asthma. 40% more likely to have asthma. Um, also, it says that 2.7 million African Americans report that they currently have asthma of some sort. Okay. Another statistic, it said that, um, and this was back in 2019, so I can only imagine what it is now. Um, it said in 2019, um, African American children had a death rate eight times that of non Hispanic or white children from asthma. And again, I'm not saying this as a scare tactic, but what I'm saying is when we think about our health, we're already more susceptible, but why? Why? What things in our lifestyle, what things in our environment are directly contributing to these things, right? So if we had a little bit of poison, right? Maybe not so bad, but if you have a little poison from your plugins, a little poison from your candles, a little poison from your hair care products, a little poison from your skincare products, a little poison from the, um, okay. A say little, it girl, because I'm ready to say it. <laughs> <laughs> your cleaning products that you're cleaning at home that on the label, it tells you you should open all of your windows and nobody should breathe it in, right? Oh <laughs> okay, that's a whole nother uh Recorded. So let me not go down that rabbit hole. I let one of y'all go down that rabbit hole. But again, if you have all of that little bit and it's it's accumulating, this is why these statistics are the way these statistics are. I was just gonna say that as soon as she brought that up about asthma, 
I, this is a we'll have a whole other live speaking we can do a special we can call it a special not even an episode mm -hmm. but i really want to know because i struggled with this when we were going through like that highest that peak of the pandemic and everybody was sick and tired and ready to be on their way and i saw so many people make this comment i really want to know so if you are a user there's no shame no blame no nothing i really want to understand um, cause even before I started using young living Steve's home products, I still never did this and I still never understood it. If you are using that cleaner, I would just say bleach. I won't give the, the product's name, but bleach, if you are a bleach user and you're dumping it in like your dishwasher to wash your dishes in bathtubs to bathe your babies and a whole bucket full to, I want to understand can you can you have a dialogue with us or with me if they don't I I need to know where did that come from and why is that something that you're more comfortable doing knowing what it says on the label or don't you know I'm I'm really curious cuz I did see a lot of it and when I would these were like high school friends and I would jump in their inbox and be like baby what why like as calm and nice, because I'm not mean, y'all. So I, you know, was real nice about it. It was just, this is just what I was taught. This is just what I know. And we're not doing this just to, you know, like middle school age children. We're sticking our toddlers and infants into bathtubs with a cap full of bleach and being like, oh, that's what, that's going to clean that baby. But like Dana just mentioned, you're not even supposed to breathe this in. How are you not breathing this in when you're mopping your floors? Because I can remember doing that and my lungs burning and being like, oh, open the windows. Like my house, I know my house is clean, but open the windows. So or I'm just curious. I would look. I'm huh? sorry. Or Go is ahead. it that mentality that, um, I mean, this is what I have to deal with because this is what I have. This is what I know. Because for me, I didn't even think about, yeah, my lungs are burning, but I know I'm cleaning my house and that's what I want. I don't care mm -hmm. if my lungs are burning. So are we reading the labels? Do we know to read the labels? Who's teaching us how to read the labels? And I wasn't reading no label. I'm just going to say that because I Dana just taught me to open the window because I never did until I couldn't breathe and then open the windows. I mean, this is not going back that long, but so I would love to have that conversation and because I know that probably triggered a few people hearing that um, and we never want to do that, but we're going to call it like it is um, because it's bad. It's so bad. And when you think you're doing one thing good, it's actually creating a whole slew of other things. And we don't want that for nobody, for nobody. So before we let y'all go, I would love for you to engage with us on this whole episode, but I would love to hear your answers on that too. If you are a bleach user and it's something you've just been doing, I want to plug our company really quickly because we all mentioned that you have the opportunity to go and ask all the questions. If you ever pass or just want to go like take a day trip, family trip to Young Living Farm or anything, you have that opportunity to see the things up hand, up, up close and personal in your hand being done. And you can understand why we are so passionate. You can ask all the questions. They are the most humblest people. But those farm workers are amazing. It's eye opening. As long as I've been with the company, I had my first experience on a farm and it just elevated the love and respect and passion that I have. So if that is something that you are like, yeah, I want to know a little bit more. I'm plugging Young Living to the max. Get out to a farm. They are literally all over the place. My Europe peeps, you have no excuse because they are there too. So go and hang out on a farm. Take some time. They are an open door to see all of the things and just really understand where we're coming from. We appreciate y'all for hanging out with us another week, engaging with us, answering our questions, and you know, just standing in the gaps with us. We will see you next week, same time, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central. Until then, we'll see you later. <laughs>